press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello friends, welcome to Phoenix Educare. Welcome to the Democratic Politics Chapter 2 of 10th CBSC. The chapter name is Federalism. So in this chapter we will study about the federal system of power sharing in which the power is divided between, between two or more levels of government. In India we are having federal system of government in which power is divided between central government and power is divided between state government. So we will study about the different levels of power sharing in this chapter. So in the first chapter we have seen how power is uh, divided vertically like there are three levels of government, central government, state government and local government. So in this chapter we are going to study about this, this, about this distribution of power. So let us begin with this chapter. So here we can see how state government and national government, both the governments are coming together and they are working together and for the, for the development of the country. So this is cooperative federalism. So cooperative federalism where state government and central government are coming together and they are working for the development of the country. State government are having state government is having some separate powers and central government is having some separate separate powers. If they are working together, so central government, which is which is more powerful as compared to state government, should allow the state government to work properly. They should give some powers to the state government. If they are getting some powers, then only state government will work independently. And if both the organs or both the levels of government are working properly, then ultimately it will lead to the development of the country. See, there are two systems of government. First is unitary system and second is federal system. Let us see what is the meaning of fed unitary system. In the unitary system, either there is only one level of government or the subunits are subordinate to the central government. So there is only one level of government which means that in the entire country there is only one, one government like in, like in case of China. In China, entire country is having only one government that is central government. But there are other chances like other cases like where the there are state government, there are subordinate units, subunits or subordinate units, but that units are subordinate to the center. So that which means that the, st the state government are not having the equal status like central government. The st central government is having more power than the state government and state government are not having independent power. Whenever the central government thinks that state government is not working properly, then they can dismiss that state government. That kind of system is called as unitary system. First is either there is only one level of government, only one level of government that is central government or the subunits are subordinate to the central government or the sub subunits are subordinate to the central government. Central government is more powerful than the state government. State government means subunits. The, then what is the meaning of federal system? The, Federal system, we are having two or more levels of government. So two or more levels. First union government and then state government. So uh, the central government cannot order the state government to do something. There are some different powers for state government. Central government cannot interfere in that powers. They cannot order the st state government to do something. In India, we are having three levels of government. But in many countries in the world, there are only two levels of government. State government has power of its own for which it is not answerable to the central government. So state government is having some specific power. It is not answerable to the central government. They can, state government can work according to the powers that are given to it. And central government has to work according to the powers that are given to the central government. Both of them are independent. And, and the state government is not answerable to the central government. State government is not answerable to the central government. In India, we are having three levels of government. We are having central government, state government and local bodies government like municipalities, panchayat, zilla parishad, panchayat etc. If you take example of first chapter or if you recall the first chapter, constitution of Belgium reduced the power of the central government and give this power to the regional government. So in Belgium, we, we have seen in Belgium there was initially there was only one level of government that was central government. There were, there were state government but that state governments were not having uh, not having the freedom to work but after the uh, constitution amendments were done after the four amendments of the constitution were done then regional government or state government or were also given the equal status they were not subordinate to the central government so uh, they were given the power to the regional government 
the regional government existed in belgium even earlier they had their own roles and power but all these powers were given to the government and could be withdrawn by the central government so earlier also central government was there and state government was there but state government was not independent if the central government thought that state government is not working properly or they are not following the central government's decision then central government can withdraw the then central government can withdraw the powers of state government the powers were given to the government and could be withdrawn by the central government the change took place in 1993 was that the regional governments were given constitutional powers no longer dependent on the central government so after 1993 the regional governments or the state governments were given power they are not now they are not dependent on the central government so they are independent on central government they can work according to the powers that are given to them earlier there were central there were central government and state government but state governments were not free to work they were all they were always forced by the central government to work according to their wish jaise central government bolega waise hi decision lena padega agar central government ko decision pasand nahi aaya state government ka तो स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को डिसमिस भी कर सकता है लेकिन 1993 के बाद स्टेट गवर्नमेंट और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट को अलग अलग पावर्स दिए गए सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट अगर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट फोर्स नहीं कर सकता स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को कि जैसे उनको काम चाहिए वैसे ही वैसे ही काम करे स्टेट गवर्नमेंट अपने जो पावर है उस हिसाब से काम कर सकता है और उसे इंडिपेंडेंस दिया गया है दिस वॉज द चेंजेस दैट वे डन इन बेल्जियम सो इनिशियली बेल्जियम वॉज यूनिटरी सिस्टम नाउ बेल्जियम हैज बिकम फेडरल सिस्टम ऑफ गवर्नमेंट thus belgium shifted from unitary to a federal form of government in sri lanka continues to be all practical purpose a unitary system because in sri lanka only the national government sinhali majority government or sinhali speaking people a government led by the sinhali speaking people is having the ultimate power there are no state governments like people of uh, tamil speaking people who are living in north and east of the country were depending for a separate uh, separate government regional government but that demand was not fulfilled by the the sinhali government at the center so sri lanka is the example of unitary system of government and belgium is the example of federal system of government tamil leaders want sri lanka to become a federal system but that, that was not accepted by the uh, by the sri lankan government federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided between the central authority central government and various constitution constituent units of the country so federalism is a system of government in which पावर इज डिवाइडेड बिटवीन सेंट्रल अथॉरिटी सो सेंट्रल अथॉरिटी का जो पावर है वो डिवाइड कर देते हैं और ये जो पावर डिविजन होने के बाद ये स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को मिलता है एंड द वेरियस कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट यूनिट्स ऑफ द कंट्री कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट यूनिट्स आर स्टेट सो दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ फेडरलिज्म यूजली द फेडरेशन हैज टू लेवल्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट वन इज द गवर्नमेंट फॉर द एंटायर कंट्री दैट इज यूजली रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर फ्यू सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कॉमन नेशनल इंटरेस्ट so there is one cent- central government that is responsible for the common national interest national interest ke liye jo bhi issues hai jaise railways hai defense hai trade relations karna hai hame dusre countries ke sath to ye jo ye jo issues hai ye pure country mein ek jaise hona chahiye jaise defense system hai hamara jaise india aur pakistan ka kya relations hona chahiye ye sabhi country mein ek hi jaisa policy hona chahiye to ye ek policy ka decision lega central government so there are few subjects of common national interest that are under the control of central government the other are government at the levels of provinces or states that look after day to day life administration of the state to so, state ka jo day to day administration hai jaise state mein agriculture kaise karna hai ya fir police system kaise hona chahiye ye sab day to day life ka issues hai state ka ye jo issues pe decision le sakta hai state government so they have differentiated the powers of central government and state government both the levels of government enjoy the power independent of other so both of them are having different different powers central government ka jo power hai usme state government decision nahi le sakta hai state government ka jo power hai usme central government decision nahi le sakta hai so decision nahi le sakta hai so government enjoy the power independent of their independent of other in federal system the central government cannot order the state government to do something so a central government cannot order the state government to do something but in unitary government central government can order the state government to do, to do, do something state government has power of its own for which it is not answerable to the central government so state government is having power of its own for which it is not answerable to the central government both these governments are separately ans- separately answerable to the people so they are separately answerable to the people so 
देर आर पीपल हु आर लिविंग इन स्टेट सो स्टेट में जो लोग रहते हैं वो स्टेट गवर्नमेंट से काम स्टेट गवर्नमेंट उनके लिए काम करेगा और सेम जो स्टेट जो लोग पूरे इंडिया में रहते हैं उनके लिए यूनियन गवर्नमेंट काम करेगा या सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट काम करेगा सो पीपल आर सेपरेटली आंसरेबल टू द पीपल जैसे इंडिया का जो डिफेंस सिस्टम है डिफेंस सिस्टम का का पॉलिसी बनाएगा सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सो जो लोगों को डिफेंस सिस्टम की पॉलिसी पसंद नहीं है वो लोग गवर्नमेंट को क्वेश्चन करेंगे और ये किसे क्वेश्चन करेंगे सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट को क्वेश्चन करेंगे और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट उनको आंसरेबल है लेकिन जो स्टेट का जो लोकल लेवल का इशूज है वो इशूज के के ऊपर डिसीजन लेगा स्टेट गवर्नमेंट और अगर लोगों को इशूज पसंद नहीं आया तो लोग स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को क्वेश्चन करेंगे एंड बोथ द लेवल्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट आर आंसरेबल टू द पीपल नाउ वी विल सी व्हाट आर द फीचर्स ऑफ फेडरलिज्म दिस इज द इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन एंड दिस इज दिस हैज बीन मेनी टाइम आस्क इन द एग्जाम आल्सो सो देर आर टू और मोर लेवल्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट फर्स्ट फीचर इज देर आर टू और मोर लेवल्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट और टू और मोर टीयर्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट लाइक स्टेट गवर्नमेंट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इन द इन द अपर मोस्ट लेवल वी आर हैविंग सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट देन स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड इन इंडिया वी आर हैविंग थर्ड टीयर दैट इज लोकल गवर्नमेंट different tiers of government govern the same citizens see if we are living in uttar pradesh and uttar pradesh people who are living in uttar pradesh are also citizens of india but the state government of uttar pradesh will only work for the people who are living in uttar pradesh but indian government or the union government will work for the people in uttar pradesh also gujarat also maharashtra also tamil nadu also kerala also and all other parts of the country so both the levels of government or different tiers of government govern the same citizen like people in uttar pradesh are, are governed by the the government of uttar pradesh and people in uttar pradesh are also governed by the government of india jo citizen rehte hai us country mein wo log unke upar state government bhi rule karega aur center government bhi rule karega to so same citizen ke upar dono level ka government rule karega and दे हैव देयर ओन जुडिशी ओन जुरिडिक्शन जैसे जुरिडिक्शन होता है कि एक बाउंड्री दिया गया दिया है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ने कि सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सिर्फ इन इशूज में डिसीजन लेगा जो स्टेट लिस्ट में जो इशूज है उनके ऊपर ही सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इशूज लेगा डिसीजन लेगा और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट कुछ अलग इशूज में डिसीजन लेगा ये दोनों के जो जो सब्जेक्ट है ये अलग अलग है इशूज है अलग अलग है तो इनका जुरिडिक्शन फिक्स किया गया है एक दूसरे के जुरिडिक्शन को क्रॉस नहीं कर सकते so in specific matters of taxation legislation and administration so legislation matlab kaun sa laws banana hai state ke liye law banayega state government pure india ke liye law banayega union government or federal government or central government and taxation tax collect karte hai jaise state government ke liye kuch alag tax hote hai central government ke liye kuch alag tax hote hai jaise income tax collect karta hai central government jaise pehle gst tha state sales sales tax tha gst ke pehle ये सेल्स टैक्स कलेक्ट करता था स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ये अलग अलग टैक्स का कलेक्शन भी अलग अलग होता है एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन स्टेट गवर्नमेंट विल एडमिनिस्टर द स्टेट एंड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट विल एडमिनिस्टर द एंटायर कंट्री द जुरिडिक्शन ऑफ द रेस्पेक्टिव लेवल्स ऑफ टीयर्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इज स्पेसिफाइड इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में क्लियरली मैंशन किया गया है कि स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का क्या पावर है और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट का क्या पावर है तो स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को पावर दिया गया है और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट को भी पावर दिया गया है और दोनों को ये पावर जो दिया गया है वही पावर को फॉलो करना पड़ता है यूज करना पड़ता है अगर एक दूसरे के पावर को पावर को सप्रेस करते हैं या एक दूसरे के पावर पावर ले लेते छीन लेते तो ये कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के खिलाफ है और उस गवर्नमेंट के ऊपर गवर्नमेंट को वो गवर्नमेंट ऐसे नहीं कर सकता है बिकॉज द पावर्स आर गिवन इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया सो द एग्जिस्टेंस एंड अथॉरिटी ऑफ ईच टीयर ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली गारंटेड सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज गारंटिंग द पावर ऑफ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट The fundamental provisions of the constitution cannot be changed unilaterally by one level of government. So there are fundamental provisions of our constitution, like the federal system of federal system of government. See, like in India, we are having federal system of government, we are having central government, we are having state government. So this is the federal system. This is the basic system of our constitution. So ये जो basic system है हमारे constitution का, ये कोई change नहीं कर सकता है. या फिर एक level of government नहीं change कर सकता है. ये अगर हमें चेंज करना है तो सभी स्टेट से भी हमें परमिशन लेना पड़ेगा सो इन इंडिया वी आर हैविंग 29 स्टेट्स, सो मोर देन 50 परसेंट स्टेट लाइक 15 स्टेट्स शुड गिव परमिशन देन ओनली द फंडामेंटल प्रोविजंस ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन विल बी चेंज सो सच चेंजेस रिक्वायर द कंसेंट और अप्रूवल ऑफ बोथ द लेवल्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट The courts have the power to interpret the constitution, or courts have the power to check the constitution. 
इफ सपोज सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट आर मेकिंग सब लॉस एंड द लॉज आर अगेंस्ट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन देन कोर्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट और हाई कोर्ट आर हैविंग द पावर टू इंटरप्रेट और चेक द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इफ दे फील दैट द पावर आर और दे फील दैट द द पावर और द पॉलिसीज दैट आर टेकन बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट आर अगेंस्ट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन देन दे कैन कैंसल दैट पॉलिसीज the powers of the different levels of government the highest court act as a umpire if disputes arise between different levels of government so suppose there are conflict between the government of maharashtra and government of india or gov or government of kerala and government of india so the supreme court of india or the highest court of india is supreme court so supreme court is acting as a umpire supreme court will act, will solve this problems at different levels of government in exercise the respective powers if they are if the central government is not allowing the state government to 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 use this powers then state government can approach the supreme court and they will file a claim file a case against the central government and if the supreme court finds that the central government is guilty then they will order the central government to to work according to, according to their jurisdiction jo unka jo laws hai unka jo rules hai ya unka jo power hai unme hi you उस उस पावर्स को ही यूज करने का उनको सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिसीजन देगा सो दे हैव टू फॉलो दैट डिसीजन द सोर्स ऑफ रेवेन्यू फॉर ईच लेवल ऑफ गवर्नमेंट आर क्लियरली स्पेसिफाइड टू एंश्योर द फाइनेंशियल ऑटोनॉमी सो देर आर सम सोर्स ऑफ रेवेन्यू और सोर्स ऑफ इनकम जैसे टैक्स इज द मेजर सोर्स ऑफ इनकम फॉर एनी गवर्नमेंट सो देर आर सम इनकम फॉर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट दैट आर रिजर्व फॉर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सो ओनली सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट विल कलेक्ट दैट टैक्स एंड there are some taxes that are collected by state government so ye jo tax ka division kiya gaya hai so division kiya hai matlab unko autonomy mila hai autonomy means they are getting they are getting guarantee that they will get some money and that money will be used for the welfare of the people so sources of revenue for each level of government are clearly specified to ensure the financial autonomy so they are clearly specified in the constitution so they are guaranteeing the state government that you will get some tax or you will get some money from this tax and so that you can use the money for the welfare of the people otherwise the state government should uh, would have always asked for the money from central government agar aisa guarantee nahi hota to state government ko hamesha central government se paisa mangna padta to is aisa paisa mangna nahi chahiye isliye hame humne ya constitution of india ne state government ko bhi financial autonomy diya hai the federal system thus has dual objective there are two objectives of federal system first to safeguard and promote the unity of the country so they are promoting the unity of the country see as in india if you, in, in case of india there are people who are speaking different languages are living in india and people who are following different religion different culture are living in india if we are not distributing the power if we are not dividing the power among these people then if we are if we are running the government like in sri lanka like unitary government then there are chances that there will be conflict between the people there will be conflict between the people and every part every language every people speaking every language or people following different religion will demand for different country so to solve this issue we have distributed the power among all the people in the country or we have distributed the power among two levels of government like central government and state government and so that state government can work for the welfare of the people in the state also the uh, union government will work for the welfare of the entire country so so they are promoting the unity of the country while the same time accommodate the regional diversity as there is regional diversity in india so they are accommodating the regional diversity pure regional diversity jo hai ye diversity ko ek sath rakhne ka koshish karta hai so federal system has having dual objectives there are two objective first to safeguard and promote the unity of the country and accommodate the regional diversity government at different levels should agree to some rules of power sharing they should also trust the each would abide by the part of the agreement so government at different levels central government and state government should agree they have to agree about the power sharing to so power jo share kiya hai ye dono ko agree hona chahiye dono ko dono ko maan lena chahiye aur they should also trust each other and they should abide by the agreement they should trust each other and they should follow that agreement an ideal federal system has both aspects mutual trust and agreement to live together so in every federal system If there is federal system in any country, then there is trust between central government and state government, and they are there is agreement to agreement to live together. So they are living together and they are working for the welfare of the people. The exact balance of power between the central and the state government varies from one federation to other. 
so in every federation like in india we are having we are having centers that is more stronger but in case of america the state governments are more stronger than the central government so from every federation to federation every country to country this power sharing is differentiating the balance of balance mainly depends on the historical context in which the federation was formed so we will see what are the two different forms of power sharing so it depends upon the historical context historical background of the country how the country was formed there are two kinds of routes through which the power federation have formed so first is coming together federation so coming together federation means all the states have come together and they have formed a country jab hi sabhi states ek sath aate hai aur ek country banate hai to use coming together federation kehte hai independent states coming together on their own to form a bigger unit means many states come together to form one country so that by pooling sovereignty pooling pooling independence or pooling sovereignty and retaining the identity they can increase the security so they are coming together they are retaining the identity uh, they are coming together to make up one identity like in case of america initially there were 13 states now we are having 50 states in america so america ke jo 50 states hai sab ne milke ek country banaya so that is coming together federation so they are coming together so that they can pool their unity or they can retain their identity and they can increase their security example usa switzerland australia these are the examples of coming together federation all the constituent units or the all the constituent states usually have equal power so sabhi jo states hai america mein unko equal power hai nobody is superior and nobody is inferior and among and strong federal system, federal government there is a strong federal government next is holding together federation so holding together federation means there is one country that is dividing the country into different different states large country de- decided decides to divide its powers between the constituent states and the national government so central government tends to be more powerful than the state uh, 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 very often the different constituent units of the federation have unequal power so the con- different states have unequal power there are some states which are having more power as compared to the other states if you take example of india then kashmir has some special power so there are some units which are which have granted special power so kashmir is having special powers in india also there are some states in northeast india which are having some special powers the example of coming holding together federation is india spain and belgium hope you have understood this in this next part of the chapter we will study about what is the reason in india can be called as a federal country and what or what makes india a federal country if you have understood this first part please share the video with your friends and please subscribe to the channel and please continue to watch the second part of the video also and thank you for watching